Welcome to the Coach's Table Podcast, where coaches come to grow personally and professionally through real-world application and online education. What's going on, everybody? Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Wow, that's crazy to think how fast it comes up and it's just like, you know, 2023 went faster, 2022 went faster. Um, the old adage of like the years go faster as you get older is pretty crazy. But 2024, here we are, new year, new me. Um, if you got resolutions, I'm not a big resolution guy. I don't really believe in that. Um, I just think if you do the things that you're supposed to do, you'll get to where you're supposed to get to when that time is, is there. But guys, look, here's the deal. I have a uh, very electric guest on today. I'm super excited for him. He's He's got a lot to share from a multitude of levels of college and strength and conditioning. Uh, but before we get there, do us a huge favor, share the show. Okay, if you're listening on Spotify, if you're on Apple, if you're on YouTube, do us a huge favor, share the show. That's the only way the show grows. For those of you that are doing that, I appreciate that. Guys, and leave us a review, okay? The review is the biggest thing because what it does is it puts a good karma out into the world and lets other people know this is a show that they should listen to. The review speaks more volume. So if you could do that, that'd be much appreciated. Um, and I would thank you and I appreciate that very much. So, Mr. John G. Patrick, what's going on, man? Not much, man. I appreciate you having me on the show. Um, just living one day at a time, like I said. I mean, very. the intro to the resolutions, I'm very similar in the same way. As long as you do what you're supposed to do and, and everything's good, you shouldn't have to change anything too dramatic, right? So, right, um, no, right. that's awesome. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's one of those things, like, when you think about it, um, it's like, okay, well, what is the new year? Well, it's just the new calendar year. Well, what does that stem from, right? And if you go down that rabbit hole, it's like, it just, doesn't really stem from anything. It's just it's like it's the new year, right? right? And so it's funny when you know people are like, "Oh, on this birthday," and we have like these numbers, like on my thirtieth birthday or my fortieth, or you know right. whatever these like magical things that all of a sudden life's gonna change. And it's like, well, <laughs> that's not true at all. <laughs> you know, if you just uh, actually do what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it, and on a daily basis, which is much harder than what it is to say. Um, you know, you'll get there to to whatever it is that you're supposed to do. But I think, you know what the biggest problem really is that I, I see is, um, and I've really been contemplating this a lot, but like a lot of people don't have a direction or a goal in which they want to achieve. Right. You know, like they just walk around so aimlessly. And so it's, um, you know, then they're like, oh, 2024. So all of a sudden I'm going to go do all this shit now. And it's like, right. you don't even know where the hell you're going, man. So like, <laughs> why don't you figure out a direction in which you want to go? Um, and then start to head in that direction regardless 100%. of the year. Yeah, I mean, you got to have a meaning, right? Like you, had, you have to have some type of direction. And that whether that comes from your background or someone that you've come in contact with or mentors or whatnot, like you have to yeah. have a direction. Whether you write it down or, or it's internally inside your head, like I know mm -hmm. what I'm going to do on a, on, a, on a yearly basis. I mean, pretty much a weekly basis. Um, I know what my goal is. I know what my mission is. And, and that's what I'm going to do, right? So yeah. Um, and it may change here or there as far as the directive of what I do. Like, like this past 2024, I've had, uh, I had to have eye surgery, right? So I've had four eye surgeries uh, oh, wow. in the matter of a year. So a lot of things have changed for me as far as, like, I'm not used to taking off work. I'm not used to being mm. uh, not physically active and, and not having a training regime, right? So a lot yeah. of things psychologically I had to work through uh, just to feel that, that, you know, I'm still – still me right so yeah uh, that's a big thing now is you know my most recent one was in mid-december so i'm still in the healing process oh, i can shit. do some stuff but i just can't train like i used to train so obviously you know even though i love training and i love you know lifting lifting heavy weights or even you know pulling some sled or something like that or even riding a bike i don't i don't really run but um i'll sprint <laughs> that's about it but um yeah that's something i have to like pretty much find different means that, that make me feel happy. Right. As far as mm. doing those things. Right. Cause yeah. everybody has things a little bit different to do. So that's been a challenge for me. Um, but I, my miss it, my, I'm going to attack it the same way I've attacked everything else. So, um, yeah, yeah so that, that's a big thing, you know? So, um, but for the most part, I mean, everybody should have their core values and, and pretty much follow those core values the best you can, whether you have something written down or you just feel it feels right to you. Yeah, man. Well, I hope your eye is healing well and, and doing I got okay, two of man. Them, so we'll, I got two of them, so we'll be okay. So it's all right. <laughs> the, I could, um, I could never imagine going blind. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I could never imagine. I could never imagine life because once you know, now that you we can see and, and all this other stuff. Right. If you take that away, I, 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 I personally, I would struggle tremendously. I could not imagine. Right. 
not having my sight. Like my no, hearing is, is gone. No, like my hearing is pretty much gone. Like my hearing is atrocious, right? right? Thank the military for that. Like my hearing is pretty much gone. Like whatever. I'll throw some hearing aids in it at some point in my life. Right. But uh, um, until then, you know, whatever. But my sight, I would struggle with that. Oh, yeah. No, I, believe me. I, I was there. So uh, around June or July, there was one point that my, my right eye, I had surgery and I for about three weeks, I couldn't see out of it all. It was completely, and I couldn't get in to get another surgery for like three more weeks. So I'm sitting there like trying to protect my left eye, you know, like yeah. just mm. in case something happens, then, you know, that I'd be completely blind. Right. So that was a time where I was just like, I was hunkering down and, and not going out very much. And I was just like, I don't want anything to happen. Like, like, wow. just, so it just, it was good. It was during the summer. Cause I was a little bit slower as far as what we were doing um, at school for training and stuff like that. So it worked out really, mm. really well. And plus, I, I have a, you know, I'm the ch department chair of the school. I'm at I'm the yep. department chair, yep. so I have a staff. So if, if I can't make it or if someone else can't make it, someone else pops in pretty easily. So sure. uh, it works out. It works out pretty good as far as that retrospect. But yeah, yeah I mean, sight is probably the sense that you don't want to lose, um, yeah. you know, especially as people get older and they get cataracts and stuff like that. Like we'll eventually lose some sight. But um, that's something that is uh, just freaks me out for sure. Oh, most definitely. <laughs> yeah, I think so. Uh, I, I definitely do. But let's kind of talk about that. So, you know, for those that don't know, you've been in the game for a minute. Um, and and I've, I mentioned to you off camera, but I, and I mean this in a very respectful way is, you know, I think you're one of the only people that I know that have made a legitimate career um, out of strength and conditioning. Uh, because it's it is typically a young man's game where they're like, you know, my mid 20s to I'm going to say probably mid thirties at the late end. And then most people are kind of like, Hey, I'm going to go do something else. Right. 100%. Um, what has kind of, or what do you kind of attribute to what's kept you in the game for so long? Um, being stubborn. I mean, really truthfully, I mean, it's just, <laughs> no, seriously, seriously, like, I mean, it's, it's, yeah. uh, you know, I, yeah. had yeah. to get, I think I, I got my first head job when I was, uh, I think 25 or 26. I was a GA for a short period of time. Sure. I went right into being a head job at FCS sure. school in, in Florida. And uh, it kind of hurt me. I think it kind of hurt me career wise. Cause I didn't have mentors that I really worked under. Right. Like that, that coaching tree. So I pretty much was like, mm. I had to fend for myself. Right. So, sure. um, but that stubbornness, I think it's really, I mean, uh, you know, I think we talked a little bit before uh, we got, you know, yeah. got going, but like just the ability to, you know, you have opportunities to get out of the profession, whether it's, you know, whether you're selling equipment or whether you're going to go do something else totally different than, than being affiliated with, with strength conditioning at all. Um, and it was just something I was drawn to that I wanted to get back into it. You know, like I had opportunities yeah. to get out and I'm just like, no, this is who I am. This is what I want to do. Um, you know, not all my jobs have been fantastic, but it's something that you work and try to improve on. And then from there, find that next step. You know, um, I've had a good support system. My wife, my wife, uh, is awesome. She supports me in everything that I do as far as career aspects. Um, you know, she's a di dietitian, so her career's and she's a little bit younger than me, so her career has taken full fold over my career 100%. So if we do move again or something like that, it's going to be something for her as far as moving that direction so that she can obtain what she wants to do. Um, and that's huge. Uh, but for the most part, man, I love I love athletics. I love being around it. I love training. Um, every aspect of training whatsoever, just the, just the mental aspect, the physical aspect, just putting yourself through uh, physical torture on a daily basis. Um, that's what I feed off of. And I, you know, sure. I love giving back to the profession, like having interns and, and being a mentor to them and, and show them the ropes. Um, but, you know, networking is huge too. So one reason that I've been able to stay in it is just, you know, mm -hmm. even though I'm a little bit older, um, you know, I, I veteran, as they say, or whatnot, like I still, <laughs> like, like I, I still, I still have a, a thirst for knowledge, right? Like my, sure. I'm all, my, my, my schemes and my, my training templates have always evolved. Um, not necessarily towards my own personal training, but what athletes need. Right. So I think yeah. that's something with social media that people see a lot is. This episode is sponsored by team builder. Team builder is the number one performance platform for strength coaches around the world. Their software provides coaches with an elevated experience when it comes to program development, data tracking, and staying connected with athletes and clients. Coaches also have access to consultations with TeamBuilder's in-house sports scientists to help manage and analyze data. 
head to teambuilder.com and sign up with promo code TABLE to start your free 30-day trial. That is teambuilder, T-E-A-M-B-U-I-L-D-R.com and sign up with promo code TABLE to start your free 30-day trial. Is they say you, you know, they see you may be trained a certain way personally, and they think mm-hmm. that transfers over what you're doing with your athletes, and that's not the case right. at all. I just don't put right. a lot of pictures of, of my athletes training just for the fact that I'm coaching. Like I'm not, I don't, I don't hold a camera all day and, and go from that aspect. So sure, um, it is what it is. But everybody has different philosophies on that too. So that's a whole, that's a whole another aspect. But yeah, you know the. Yeah. the the profession is, has changed, right? Like it's, it's totally changed and evolved. Um, you know, it used to Super be chaotic right now, as 100%. you said earlier. Yeah, yeah. It used to be, I mean, it used to be when I first got a job, it used to be, you know, everybody that did Olympic lifts and then everybody that was like high intensity, like machine based stuff. Those were like the, sure. those were like the, you know, the two, you know, two people that just went back and forth. And now it's, you know, now it's like, Hey, should we do Olympic lifts or not do Olympic lifts? You know, you know, yeah. Just, it's evolved. It's the same stuff, but it's just a matter of, you know, um, I mean, what's best for the athlete and what works in the facilities that you have and how can you, how can you make it work for your, for your kids, you know? So, um, right. but I've been blessed. I mean, I hope, I hope I'm coaching for another 20 years. I really do. Um, but wow. you just have to find, as you get older, find positions that are going to be more sustainable to, to someone, mm. you know, your credentials. So if you're a power five strength coach, it may be something that, um, there, there are some older guys in there, but it may be something they're locked in, right? Like they've had, they've had tenure and, and go from there, but there may be some individuals that are Miller road that, you know, maybe they don't, they don't want to work long hours anymore. Maybe they want a little bit more pay. Maybe they want to spend more time with their family. Um, mm-hmm. It's all what's really mm-hmm. important to you. And, 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 go, and I think yeah. one reason I've probably stayed in the profession so long is I, at the time, you know, I really don't have, I don't have kids or anything like that. You know, it's something we're working sure. towards. If I had kids, then it may be something that, I could have, I would have quit this profession a long time ago. So, <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Uh, you know, a lot of the people that are, 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 um, near my age range, right. We're kind of on the younger, I'm not that mm-hmm. young, but kind of on the younger side of things is, is, um, you know, it's like you, you get your first job, maybe your second job. Um, and you realize like, shit these 12 hour days are like a real thing right and a lot of times for very unnecessary reasons right um oh, right. because some coach wants to train at 6 a.m and it's like right well we don't need to fucking do that shit right but and then some coaches like i i only train after practice it's like okay whatever um so then it just makes your day worse right right but then you say okay well i have a, a significant other and we want to have a family. Well, what does that look like? And then you start to ask those questions. And then you start to go down the route of like, well, when are you ever going to be around? How can we financially afford this, right? Because you're getting paid pennies on pennies on the dollar, right? Yeah. And, um, you know, then you start to question like, hey, I might only do this for two or three years and then I'm going to bounce. Or, hey, I'm going to do this until I, I get some more skill sets or I, I, you know, whatever. Until, you know, push really comes to shove and you're just like, hey, look, like, this is, I'm not doing this anymore because no, you value no. other things like, and you can impact people in other ways too. Right. But then you value other things and you're just like, Hey, look, like I don't need to be here 12 hours a day for, you know, some of these people that don't care about me, uh, that don't care about what I want or need that don't care about my pay, that don't care about my personal life, that don't care about any of this. And you start to say like, man, what the heck? Right. Like no, you start to question and you start to kind of figure out a way to say, what is the next move here? Yeah. And I think the big thing is, is I think you, I mean, the only person looking out for you is you, right? Like that's the only, just like we talked about earlier. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of people saw this when COVID happened, right? Like, um, you know, you're out, a lot of, a lot of strength coaches got laid off or, or got let go because they just weren't, they weren't necessity employees or whatnot. And, you know, if, let's say you got laid off and you have a mortgage to pay. And if you're, if you're part of this family that you're supposed to be <laughs> yeah. training this team, well, can you go mm. back to that coach and go, hey, coach, I don't have a job. And I know I was part of your family before. Can you pay my mortgage this month? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. would, that, would that even happen? No. That, I mean, very rare. Not at all. You know, but, um, you know, so it's like, it is what it is. I mean, um, we kind of, we kind of, I think eventually we, we like the excitement at first, right? And we love yep. doing it, training it. You know, when I first got in the profession, mm-hmm. I, I, 
it was mm-hmm. it was when I first got my first head job, it was me and I think I had an intern and we had 20 teams. So you don't have yeah. time to think. You don't have time to think about going on a date or Anything. doing this. Or, yeah. You know, next thing mm-hmm. you know is, is summer's here and you're like, okay, I'm going to get some time off for summer. But now you're training even more because you have less kids and now you got, you know, it's you're, it's just dog days after that. Next thing falls here and you're doing the same thing again, right? And then years go by yep. and you're like, mm-hmm. I'm, you know, and I, I think exactly what you said as far as, you know, guarding a desk and being working 14 hour days or 18 hour days or whatnot, <laughs> yeah. that, that, that you really sense that when you start working with, um like specific teams right like okay yeah. instead of yeah. having 20 having 10 teams i have two teams now okay now mm-hmm. i maybe i've trained one team in the morning and one team at night or something like that that's perfectly fine but you know do i have to be here in the middle of the day if i live right down the road can i just do i have to be at Go home. home you know i used to work right. with bosses that hey we're gonna be here from 5 a.m until 8 at night and i don't you just sit at your desk and and make it happen. You know, if you got something you need to work on, then work on it. So pretty much, and all of a sudden, those are the only people, you know, right? Like you're doing everything, yeah. together, which is good, which is yeah. fun. But yeah, if you leave that job and go somewhere else, you're going to be competing, competing your, against your old boss for another job. You know, it's, it's the job. A lot of people don't understand that. Like it becomes more and more competitive as you go through things. So just because of the saturation, of the whole field, but um, you have to have a, yeah. What, mean which is yeah which is you know and that's a sad thing to think about right so like you know it's, it's so funny because like let's just compare this to another field it doesn't matter what it is pick a random one where you can let, let's say business because you can go get an mba everybody knows right. an mba okay so you know you look at the strength coach world um and and, and the way that the the their uh career unfolds typically right so you go you're you know a undergrad ga intern whatever um and then you get your first job and maybe it's a part-time job maybe it's a full-time job whatever the case may be right well you have a master's degree which says hey i should be paid more than the people that right. don't but the administration doesn't look at it that way they don't care so you well, get paid the master's degree just gets you a qualification in the to door get the part-time or yeah it just gets you in the door so which is insane to think about first and foremost right so then they say well this position pays Pennies on the dollar, 30,000, 40,000. And you should just be thankful that you get this job, right? Right. And you're like, yo, what the hell? And then you get into a position where you're grinding 14 hours a day, like you said, and the years go by, the yep. years go by. And they're like, here's your 2% raise. And you're like, so I went from 30,000 to 34,000 or 32,000 or whatever. And or um, like, school, they, they, have a higher, they have a freeze. You might not even get a uh, a raise. Yeah. You know I mean? And they're so, like, yeah, you should be so, you right. should be so thankful for this raise that you got, right? And then you start to say, well, I really want to specialize in one team because that has a higher opportunity to pay more. And it's typically the big three. There's no other teams that are really paying that much, you know, um, unless you're going to go like uh, live in another country for like tennis or something of that nature, right? So then you go, okay, cool. So I'm going to focus all my time and efforts with those people, which is great. Awesome, cool, love that. And then, you know, now you're like, well, I don't really like all these other teams and why do I need to do them? Because I'm just going to focus towards this, blah, 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 whatever. So then you lose some teams, which is fine. You feel better about it. But then your boss is still like, well, you still need to be here the entire time. And you're like, well, why do I need to be here the entire time? Well, that's right. kind of dumb, <laughs> right? Like if I'm not doing anything, why do I need to be here? Okay. That's dumb. Um, and then you're like, okay, after two, three years of that, you're like, hey, look, this is dumb. I could go make a lot more money doing something else, like probably working at a gas station for the money that we're getting paid. Right. <laughs> and then some people go, well, I'm going to go the business route. I'm going to go do the sales. I'm going to go do whatever, right? But if you look at that in comparison to a, a, a another um, field as an MBA, you know, you go get your MBA and then you automatically – get a pay raise. Actually, companies will pay for you to go right. get your MBA and then they will give you an automatic raise as soon as you complete that. And it's not a $1,000 raise. It's a, it's a decent raise typically, right? And then you're in a leadership position. So you, you know, you're you not doing the tedious tasks per se, but you're in a leadership position and you're making 80, 85, 90-ish right, right out of the gates, right? And you don't have to be there for 15 hours a day or 27 hours a day. You don't have to travel. And it's like you start to look at this and you go, 
My goodness, that looks way better, yeah, you know, right? And just, well, it's the same thing with people that do like a double major. Like they get a bachelor's yeah. in exercise science and then get a master's in like kines or exercise phys. Like sure. unless you're going to go, unless you're going to go teach, it's yeah. not, I mean, it's not really worthwhile. You should probably split it up and you can do exercise phys in business or exercise phys in marketing, like something. Yeah, yeah. So that way later on you're setting yourself up. But a lot of people, I mean, right. they don't get the guidance, right? Like they don't. They don't have people tell tell them what they need to do, or they just don't plan it out. They're like, "Hey, sure. you know, I want to I want to work with I want to be a coach, so I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do PE or be a teacher or this or that." And then some people, yeah, just want to coach and don't want to be a PE teacher at all, you know. So, um, yeah, and that's kind of how that's kind of like the same thing with you know a lot of the athletes, right? Like you'll deal with some athletes, and and they'll go to a school to play a sport, but you know, they're always undecided as far as their major or what they need to do. And then they just pick a yeah. major because they have to. And next mm-hmm. thing you know, they're graduated with a, a criminal justice degree or a sociology degree. And I, if anybody's listening and has that, that's perfectly fine if you want to do that. But they're getting in degree areas that they're never going to use outside of of school. You know what I'm saying? They're just doing it just yep. so they can yep. keep on going and continue to play sports. Um, right. And that's, that's kind of like a bust of, of you know, the whole – collegiate system and the whole aspect and another another bust is 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 before nils even happen you know yeah using kids for four or five years and then once they don't make pro or whatnot then you just you just like a baby bird out of a, a nest You're like okay well good luck like they don't give yeah. them tangibles you know what i'm saying to like continue their yeah continue their education but now with nils i mean it's 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 silly as far as some of the money some of these kids are, especially from football aspect um you know, it's insane. It's just round robin, yeah. It's 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 silly. So. <clears throat> My personal okay. So if we're gonna go into nil, <laughs> here's the thing. I have no issue with players getting paid. They've been getting paid for a hot minute to begin with, whether right. you know about it or not, and whether it's direct here's cash or not. But here's the problem. Well, there's a lot of problems, really. <laughs> but here's the problem. I believe if you are a coach, that doesn't mean hear hear this on a, at a, at a collegiate level. At a high school level, your coaches should probably be paid more than your players, right? right yes, right. the players are the product. Yes, I recognize that. They're the ones doing it in, in college at the Division One level. You know as much as I know. Right. It is a job. They typically don't have time to do anything else. I agree with that. I recognize that 100%, right? And so, cool, we can compensate them for that. That's totally fine. But when you're paying, paying players millions and millions to come play a position, and then a coach is like, "Hey, bro, I make thirty grand. Can I get ten thousand more?" They're like, "No, what there's, there's no happen, money." What needs to happen is if you're if your players are getting this big NIL deals or whatnot, and you're coaching that player, then you should get a percentage of that kid's NIL deal. I mean, that's how it works right. at at other levels, right? Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying. Like, if a kid's getting X, Y, and Z, okay, well, well, then the school probably doesn't have to pay you as much anymore, just for the fact that you might get more money off these kids, but it's a way to supplement, you know, that that's just something to think about. You know what I'm saying? Um, Mm -hmm. Who Mm -hmm. knows, you know, and then that way it may be something that, okay, I want a kid that comes to my school and transfer from from this school. Well, maybe I'll take a lesser percentage out of his, out of his NIL so he can go. Well, the thing is, is a messy subject. So that's a whole nother. The thing is, is it sets unrealistic expectations after college. And here's what I mean by that. So you pay these players hundreds of thousands of dollars or they get free, the the apartment is paid for or blah, 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 whatever, right? When they, and then, oh, by the way, for a lot of teams that don't have standards, that don't have, hey, like you're going to show up on time, do all these things, right? What then is going to occur when they don't go pro because it's like, what, 97% of college athletes don't go pro. And yes, we should focus on them and we're going to try to make them be the best possible. I agree with that. And we're going to, we're going to pour our time and our efforts into helping them be the best possible. But what it then does is it gives them a false reality of the real world when you actually go and have to get a job and you actually have to work and do all these other things. Now they're going to say, well, with all the money they have, they have opportunities to do other things. You're right. They do, which is great. And that's amazing. And there's nothing wrong with that. But for the majority of them, it's not going to happen. Right, the top percent of them that were going to go pro anyways are going to go pro, and the rest of them are not. Sad. It's sad. It's the reality of the business. But when you then pay them hundreds of thousands of dollars, and then they go to a job, and it's like you have no skill set, you have minimal degree, you have no actual experience in this field, 
right? Yes, you were a college athlete, which is amazing. And that's great. And we love all that. But as a business, that's how they're going to look at that, right? And they're going to say, okay, well, so we're going to... Employers, employers want to hire former athletes, right? Just because of perseverance, sure. of their high qualities, sure. of the ability to show up on time. Well, if you have an individual transferring from one place to one place to one place all the time, that doesn't show struggle, does it? It's just a matter of, right. it, it, it kind of lessens that, that whole mantra of, of mm. well, why should I hire a student athlete? You know what I'm saying? Like, um, just because that person's never really maybe gone through some sacrifice or struggled or, or planned anything out really, you know? So, sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's just my, my thing. And, 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 you know, like, and also the thing is with the NILs, the problem there then is too, is, is, and this is not all of them, but it's, it's a large majority of them. They don't have to um, go and speak with the businesses to get the deal, right? They make a profile, the business comes to them. This is where we fail them dramatically too. Whereas if you're in the actual real world, the business world, like, okay, for instance, if I want another sponsor, or more sponsors for my podcast, I not only have to produce the results to say, this is why it's beneficial for your company. And then if you are going to pay me, here's what you're going to pay me. And I have to prove to them why you're going to pay me X, right? And then say, this is the projected growth over blah, blah, blah. Same thing with the business. If you want to go do collaboration with another business, you have to come up with ways and why it's beneficial, mutually beneficial for them for the other business to do so and pay money and all those other things. The problem is where we're failing these kids is they just have to create a profile and businesses are rushing to them and saying, make one post a month, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's great, but we're not teaching them tangible skills on how to actually negotiate, on how to actually write contracts, what this understands, what this means, what your requirement is actually going to be, and if you don't, what the consequences are of a breach of contract, what the consequences are from all these other angles. And so it's like we're missing such a massive skill set of teaching them this stuff because we're essentially teaching them the small aspects of being entrepreneurs, but we're not teaching them how to do it appropriately. And we're not giving them direction on marketing. And, and if you are going to go on social, what does it look like? And how do you pro uh, put the product, in, you know, if this, if I'm doing water, where do I position this in my videos and how do I make it sound? And all these other skill sets that you can then go to a business and say, look, I grew this following. The thing is we aren't teaching them any of this. It's just make a profile. Businesses will come to you. And I, I think so, we're failing them. I think well, we're I mean, failing it's so, them. It, it, it's blown up so quickly. Mm -hmm. And then eventually we're going to have to try to catch up to it. And then mm -hmm. there's going to be some kind of pushback. You know what I'm saying? So, well, the, yeah. And the genie's out of the bottle. You can't put him right. back in it. Right. Yeah. Right. And so it's like, it's, it's blown um, up so anyways. quick. You know, it's been, and even high school, like there's some, some states that are allowing NILs for high schools too. Yeah. Um, which is insane. So like, yeah. Like there's, there's a high school near me. Um, just unbelievable Gainesville high school up in mm -hmm. uh, Gainesville, Georgia. And that place is, I mean, it's, it's crazy. You know, they have an indoor facility, they have an awesome weight room. Like it's, it's legit, but it's something they have the athletes like, like kids are leaving sure. certain school systems to go play there because they have the best of everything. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. Um, yeah. And that's the thing too. If you don't, you want a kid to come to your school, then, Oh, Hey, I got, you know, such and such wants to give you an NIL and that'll pay for this, this, and this. And then all of a sudden, it just rolls downhill and he has a couple of buddies that want to come and then it just flourishes after that. Right. So, um, and the same thing with like Texas and, and all those schools, all those States that have high profile, you know, football, football programs and stuff like that. So yeah, um, it's definitely an interesting business. And that, and that comes down to, you know, with kids moving from one program to another, a lot of strength coaches are getting, getting tired of putting their time into developing kids and they're leaving the profession too, right? Like I know I have a couple mm -hmm. of friends, you know, that are at FBS level schools and they said, well, if this kid's going to leave after a year, why do I have to put so much time and effort into developing him and putting him on the right track? And then someone comes and poaches him. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, absolutely. The question that I have is if I'm a business, right. I have to ask myself, what is my ROI on NIL? So if I right. pay these players, that's great. It's a marketing thing. It's ad spend. What is my ROI on that? And does it make feasible sense? Because we're not, I mean, you can go find out the businesses that are paying the NIL stuff and all that, but it's not like it's, a, 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 you know, as public as possible. But I'd be curious to, from, from a number standpoint, does it even make financial sense? I think very you know what little. I'm saying? Yeah, no, I think, I think all schools are doing is, is taking, like if there's a booster, and usually booster just gives to the school a general fund. It may be something that school kind of takes those funds or says, tell, tells the booster, Hey, 
put it in this route instead. Sure. And, and, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and mm -hmm. because those larger schools are going to make money no matter what, because they're making millions of dollars off of TV stuff, right? They're making yeah, millions yeah, of dollars yeah, off yeah, of ticket yeah. sales and everything else. So, I mean, those boosters are, are willing to throw, I mean, money at anything, you know, if it's, if, it's, True. if, if you know, just like to get, uh, um, the coach at, uh, coach at Texas A&M that got the guy, yeah, like, yeah. you know, the, a yeah. booster just signed that check. One, one guy and said, <laughs> Hey, get, he's done. He's done. Right. So it's like the money that the yeah. money's expendable that they, that these businesses yeah. are giving away, you know, it's, it's, That's... it's silly. I mean, <laughs> it... <laughs> I mean, yeah, if the kids are taking advantage of it and it changes someone's whole, you know, socioeconomic outlook as far as where they were and where they're going, that's fantastic. But just like you said, we have yep. to put, we have to educate them on how to handle that situation. So that way it's just not people, first off, that people don't take advantage of them, but they actually invest that money. So it lo lasts the longevity of their career, right? Correct. Yeah, exactly. And then, you know, talk to them about, Hey, you should now, you know, file business entity. So then, right. because that money is taxable income, I believe. So yeah. then, Hey, you should file a business um, and, and, and a business entity and learn how to reduce your taxes. And, and all this, right. it's all these other things that it's, it's, I mean, you know, players have millions and millions of dollars, but anyways. Um, <laughs> so, okay. So you've been, you know, you've been in the field for a while, which is great. And I'm not going to ask for 10, five, but let's go three. What are the three biggest lessons you've learned throughout your time at the collegiate level? Uh, you can go high school or just your career as a whole. Yeah. I mean, I mean, first and foremost, networking. I mean, hundred percent huge. Like if you're an undergrad yeah. and you're in, in the educational field and, and your next step is getting an internship, you have to, you have to be strategic on who you get that internship under. You know what I'm saying? You almost kind of have to be, you almost mm. have to talk to the genie and go, Hey, who's, who's the next best thing? Because yeah. um, as soon as people affiliate yeah. with, with a certain individual, then all of a mm. sudden they're, they're hot. You know what I'm saying? Um, and they'll also be they'll also be determined on, on you know like like Coach Moffitt you know Tommy Moffitt like he's a big Olympic lift guy right that's what he's known for of course that's not all he does in his program but if someone sure. goes hey I want a Moffitt guy then they know that you're going to be having some type of Olympic lift in their program and they're coming from the Gail Hatch system back in the day and X Y and Z right so um, yeah I think there's still those kind of I don't want to say clicks but still those coaching trees underneath sure. there. And the biggest thing is is setting yourself up. That's going to be the biggest, as far as the collegiate aspect, that's the biggest, I think, advantage um, mm. that some people have over others. Now, you just like we talked about earlier, you could have the same, you could have the same uh, resumes, you could have the same credentials as far as certifications. Uh, people are automatically looking at that name of that school and then looking at those references on the back back sheet you know what i'm saying or or a phone yeah. call someone calling that person right like every yeah. job i've gotten has been you know even, i've worked at you know i've worked in private sector college yeah, different yeah, levels yeah. Of college, yep. high school every job has been through someone calling for me it hasn't been through my resume at all so yeah it, it, and that's the thing it could be anybody so yeah you know i think number one is just network is, is pretty much picking picking the school or picking the avenue or who you're going to do that internship under um, and then after that is obviously continuing networking as you get in the profession, as you grow. Right. Um, you know, there's so many things we've seen as far as the continued education aspect, um, pretty much kind of gone and went, you know, like RPR yeah. was really big. Uh, FRC was really big. FMS was really big. Like all these things, you know, now you have like, um, there's a couple different, couple different things out there still that are, that are popping up and they may help you. But mm -hmm. that used to be like, you know, for baseball, if you if you're FRC, then you're automatic. You need that for baseball and that's going to help out with baseball. Sure. And if you want to be a pro guy, that's good. You need this. And it's a selling point. Um, but you have to kind of you can get that stuff if you want to. But in, in the long run, a lot of that stuff comes and goes. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not it's not anything <laughs> that. That you can't get just from talking to somebody or, or, or just from with all the knowledge base out there, social media, YouTube, whatever, you can grow and understand that stuff pretty easily without investing a thousand dollars for a certain certification. So um, I think that's stuff's great, but um, it is what it is. I mean, it's totally evolving. Um, so, I mean, obviously picking, you know, your internship spot, networking is huge. 
and then obviously trying to set yourself up um, with where you want to be in the future, right? Like um, if family is important to you, um, if it's something that, you know, you want to be close to your immediate family, you know, trying yeah. to figure out, you know, most of my family's in the Southeast. So I'm in the Southeast, you know, so yeah, that kind of works I, out then. Yeah. Right. Any job, any job that I look for, or if I'm interested in, um, unless it's something that is like a once in a lifetime opportunity, I'm looking in the Southeast, you know what I'm saying? Sure. So, um, that's something, you know, until that changes, you know, it is what it is, but that's, that's what I'm doing just because I've been away. I've worked at different schools and been away from my family for an extended period of time. Um, and my, you know, just like as my parents are getting older, it is what it is. You only have so much time left. So that kind of changes things. Right. So, um, yeah, it, you just kind of have to, you have to set yourself up for that long term. And, and a lot of people will chase logos, right? Like, Hey, I want to work at this school and I want to work at that school. And you only have a finite amount of time to get in there and have that opportunity. So yeah, that all comes back from your coaching tree and, and, and going from the and networking. But like, if you have one shot, you're going to have one or two shots to really get to that next level and you can either take it and run with it, or you can, you can sacrifice, you know, um, and sacrifice, you know, being with friends and family in, in different location. Um, or you can go, you know what, I'm pretty happy being at this school over here because I can do some other things and be close to some people and have relationships. So you kind of have to choose what kind of coach you really want to be, right? Or where you want to set yourself up to be at, right? Um, and I'm not saying that if you just totally disregard and go across the country and do something that you'll never get a chance to come back, but right. it's a difficult situation for sure. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, you know, it's one of those things. It's 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 interesting because as the field evolves, you see you see a couple of things, right? So you see people that are very, you know, the niching down or niching down, whatever you want to call it, which is great. Love that. Um, and, and I think that's a positive. Um, you know, some guys are I'm speed guys. I'm an Olympic lift guy. I am an FRC guy. Like you know specifically in the world of football, and I can't really speak too much on that, but specifically in the world of football, you know, that's what they're they're looking to hire. Like, are you the FRC guy? Are you the nutrition guy? Right, whatever. Because if you look at it as a staff, it's like, okay, I want to check all my boxes, you know, and say, okay, like, if you're the speed guy, you know, that's your emphasis. Yes, you can still do all the other things. Great, love that. And, and I think there's a lot of benefit to that. You know, and then when you look at other things like, you know, baseball, are you FRC certified? Yes or no? Or, you know, baseball team wants a baseball guy. Well, what does that mean, right? Because, um, like, when you really think about it, like, you can work for anybody <laughs> as long as you understand movement and proficiency and all this other stuff. Yeah. Like, because you can reverse engineer the sport and learn. It's not hard, right? But, uh, but there's the, the, the stigma of, like, I'm a baseball coach. I need a baseball guy. I'm a basketball coach. I need a basketball guy, right? Um, and so it's, it's, it, there's a lot of that with it. So, you know, there's, there's, there's the, the pro and the con of being like, I'm going to specialize in this or be known for that, right? Or, or, or hey, I'm just going to be general um, and really not be known for anything. I'm just a strength and conditioning coach. And for me personally, I say go the other way. Be known for one thing because you can get paid really well for that one thing. Not that you can't be in general, but um, I think you have a better opportunity from a skill set standpoint from a need standpoint, because if everybody knows you as X guy, you know, at some point the phone's going to ring and they're going to say, Hey man, we got an opportunity. You're the person, you know, what do you think? Um, that's yeah, where I too. think personally, uh, but, but I, I don't know. I could be wrong too. No, I think, I think you're right. I mean, it's, it's, you're, you're going to, I mean, it's, you're definitely going to set yourself up for success just for the fact, like you said, there's some, sure. if you want to be a basketball guy or football guy or whatever you want to do, that's fantastic. I think you also have to be set up that with that, how many other people are just going to want to be basketball guys. Right. So it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it, you're, you're running in the same situation no matter what, but the thing is too, mm -hmm. is you can become so highly specific and specified in that area because now for CEU stuff, instead of, okay, well, I got to learn this for tennis and got to learn this for golf or this, you know what I'm saying? Now you can just focus on, what you're going to use for the basketball aspects, you know? Um, right, right. And that, right, that's, that's right. huge. And I think, you know, I think a lot of us network, we go to conferences and we network with other strength coaches. Uh, but at the end of the day, a lot of the strength coaches aren't hiring, aren't hiring the, the strength, the coaches. I the was just going to say Yeah, you know, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah. um, so like 
that that's a tough thing is I can oh I know I know so and so so if he gets somebody on if he has an opening on his staff then I can get in there well sometimes he's not making the decision or she's not making the decision you know what I'm saying so mm-hmm. um, it's kind of mm-hmm. like that's why you never really want to have bad blood with any coach that you ever really work with just for the fact that you may call them back down the road and and they may need to be a reference for you you know what I'm saying as far right, as sport goes, right so right, I would say right, keep right. those those uh ties really close like I have a I have a sheet of all my old interns um, or all of my old mentors. And then I have one of like all my old coaches that I used to work with from like different sports. So I try to like, not necessarily monthly, but like every two months or three months, just send an email or call or text or yeah, just, just yeah. to see what they're doing um, yeah. or see if they're still in the business or see where they're at and just say, Hey, you know, Hey, I'm here and here. Just keep, keep them up to date. You know what I'm saying? So now if something yep. does come open or, you know, if you know that they worked with somebody else elsewhere and, and they're looking for somebody, they could, it could be a connection. You know what I'm saying? So really working those lines, so to say. Yeah. I think that's one thing that a lot of people could be really better at. Um, because what, here's what happens, right? As we go, we connect, we make a connection. Oh, cool. This is great. He's a great person. Right. Two months later, you completely forget about him. A year later, yep. you're like, Oh fuck. I don't even know. Right. And, and then you like come out of the blue when you need something. Right. And then they're like, bro, I haven't talked to you in like a year, man. What are you talking <laughs> about? But it's like, if you, like you said, you know, Hey, maybe once a month, Hey, what's up? Or everybody's on social now. So you can see him on social. Oh, yeah. Hey, I just saw blah, blah, blah. This is awesome. Good luck. Blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. Right. It's quick stuff, but at least, you know, I look at it from this perspective for those it's like, okay, if I only talk to you when I need you. So if there's, if I talk to you one time and I ask you for something, you're going to associate the next time I talk to you to, I'm going to ask you for something. Right. But if I talk to you 10 times, and I don't ask you for anything. And I just say, hey, John, how are you, man? Like, you're going to be like, cool. Hey, man. And then I'm like, hey, man, can you help me on this thing? you are be like, yeah, absolutely. Right? But a lot of people don't even think about that. And they just think of like, well, I know him, so he should help. It's like, well, maybe, maybe not. You know? It's like, no, you got to look at the number of times, you know? No, I think I think a big thing, too, is is no matter what the person's title is, it's something that they're still going to be important, right? So. Just like yeah. if you're in football, you have an offense analyst or offensive GA, or if you're in basketball and you have, you know, the manager or something like that, like those people are, those people are in in the weeds too with you, right? They're, they're learning the game. Yeah. They're understanding what's going on. They're a, it's pretty much yeah. a predecessor of that coach they're working for. And you don't know when that person is going to move up the ladder either and where they're going to end up down the road too, right? Like there's plenty of managers that I've, I've worked with that that now are head basketball coaches at at schools or, you know, like they've continually grown and and gone from there. So no matter if they're like a student assistant or what's going on, like you still have to treat them. You know, it used to be, you just treat them like dirt, right? Like, Oh, they're interns. I mean, you got to treat them like real people and and it doesn't matter what their title is. Like they're still, they're still going to be important people down the road. Right. Like you still got to serve them and, and, and help them just as much as they help you, uh, doing whatever they do on, for the for the team. So yeah, absolutely. Okay, so your first one was was networking. Yeah, um, I think two networking. And, I two think, and three. Yeah, I think the second one was is obviously the education aspect. Picking where picking where you go to school or picking that mm. that tree that you're gonna work under. Right. Um, I think a lot of people look at the big schools and and the big colleges on your resume, and they're like, oh, you went to you know you went to this Power Five school or you played ball at this Power Five school then that automatically makes them more inclined to coach at that level. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, um, mm-hmm. and that happens all the time. Like I went to a small D3 school. Um, mm-hmm. We were predominantly good in sports, but a lot of people, oh, you played D3. Well, uh, what's, uh, that's okay. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? It, yeah. But you still, mm-hmm. you still went through the, you know, yeah, I, I, I mean, I paid to play sports. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's probably the worst thing I could probably ever done, but it is what it is. Like, <laughs> um, but yeah. that's that's that clout, you know. It's it's another way in uh, for people to recognize what's going on. So if like you're if you're if you're going to a Georgia, or if you're going to you know Ohio State, a Michigan, Alabama, like those are things that pinpoint. Especially if you play sports there, that really pops out to people, uh, yeah. and coaches and stuff like that. So um, yeah. I think that's huge too. Is just being you know a lot of kids might want to you know, they might not focus too much on academics in high school just because they know they're going to go to their local state school or, 
or sure. they're going to stay close to home. But mm-hmm. it's something that, okay, hey, if, if I know that, you know, if I know Michigan is is playing really, really well and they've been in this this position to be a good football team, it may be something I try to go there and intern with their program and, and try to move in that direction because it seems as if that'd be a good coaching tree to be under. You know what I'm saying? So just trying to be yeah. trying to be trying to be strategic in that manner, if that makes sense. Yeah, you almost have to like, you know, you have to strategically plan it out, right? Yeah. So, and I think that's you know, one thing that a lot of people, uh, myself included, did not do, well, I did a little bit, but did not do to the full extent, you know, um, because, you know, just because you have X logo on your resume doesn't mean you're that type of, you, you're that gets quality you the door, of coach. Though. I mean, it's just like, it's yeah, just it gets like you in the door for sure. Journey, right? Like if someone sees it, yeah. you're yeah. You know, automatically, yeah. you're in the door because you have a connection somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, 100%. I, I don't think it'll ever hurt you. That's for sure, you know. Um, I don't think it would ever hurt you. And um, yeah, so, so yeah, you got to definitely strategically plan your career out. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's two numbers during that time, right? Like you're thinking of just absolutely oh, where not I, where are we going to party at and what are we going to do? And oh, like my friend's going to be there. Who am I going to be living with? You don't know that in so many yeah. years, it's going to play a point yeah. of, of how far you can actually excel, you know? So, right. Um, right. Right. I think right. the last, the last one from, from my retrospect mm-hmm. is just like we talked about, you know, once you get into that coaching tree and, and you're known for something, right, whether you're known for Olympic mm. sports or speed or, or whatever, is still follow up. And, and I think it's still good to have to travel and to meet with other people to learn, I guess, what their philosophy is. Right. Just to try to yeah. continue that educational aspect. Um, like when I, I first initially when I was first initially got my head job, I would work early mornings. Uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, right? So they had OTAs. So I'd go down to Jacksonville mm-hmm. Jaguars. And during that time, they were completely high intensity, machine based. I was Olympic yeah. list at the time. So I know the guy didn't, he didn't believe Olympic list, but he never tried to change my mind, right? But I, mm-hmm. I visually saw the progress of why he was doing, you know, one set to failure, or doing these machine based exercises with uh, with the athletes. And it, it got me a different concept of, of how to train people, right? Vice versa, if you right, go, right. You know, a lot of people are conjugate. A lot of people are just like you said, are more into speed aspects or aren't strong in the speed and agility aspect. So go educate yourself on that by finding a, yeah. finding someone that's a specialist, right? So I yeah. think that's huge. I mean, do not just stay in your own little box all the time, uh, but find something that's going to excel and, and that you can bring back to your teams, right? Or back to your athletes. Yeah. Even if it's just one athlete that's going to grow from it, that's better than, I mean, than just not doing it at all. So yeah, absolutely. So, okay, uh, with that and um, maybe a hot subject, but, you know, mm-hmm. where do you kind of think people should go for, uh, you know, for their education? Because you could go to conferences and, and they're crap shoot, right? right. Um, especially ones that are put on by these governing bodies, they're crap right. shoots. Um, you know, there's more popping up that are way better, right? So there's there's a lot more that are smaller and they're very specific that I think are fantastic. Now there's other ones that I'm like, I will never ever go to that one because it's going to be terrible. Um, where have you consistently learned from over your period as a coach? Yeah. You know, when I first started coaching, we didn't have social media, right? So I mean, yeah. like, you could just jump yeah. on social media and you couldn't just connect with somebody right away or sure. – or- zoom or, or podcast or mm-hmm. anything right so um it, I was, it was pretty much regional where i was at so sure okay. you know um i would just find you know if i'm working a 12-hour day and i'm working 365 a year i got to find something that i can pretty much connect with right away so um you know like when i was at jack i, was, I used to work at jackson university in jacksonville florida so yep, like yep, the, yep, yep. jacksonville jaguars are there so i used those those guys as a resource when i was there as much as i could there was some olympic lifting uh, individuals there that ran like USAWs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So it would it'd be something I was a big Olympic lift individual back then. So I would, you know, try to try to pretty much get with them and, under, and, and try to learn some more techniques or what they're doing with their athletes. Um, even within the compound, uh, you know, track track coaches are huge. So if you're not using your track yeah. coach to your advantage, um, if yeah. you're, you're making your athletes a total disadvantage or just some type of movement specialist, right? Um, mm-hmm. Even rec centers. I mean, that's a big thing too. Is is rec centers do have professionals that have exercise science degrees, um, 
So going and just talking to them and on, on maybe certain things, if you know, on a one-on-one aspect, I mean, anything could really be beneficial, but you know, like when I work, when I lived anywhere I lived, I pretty much regionally just went to every school possible. It doesn't matter if D3, sure. D2, D1, it didn't know, sure. it didn't matter, you know, Hey, where do most of the kids go to do like performance training? I'll stop in. Is it a D1 or is it like a velocity or, you know, like, yeah, anything yeah, 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 with yeah, strength yeah. Conditioning. but you know, then when social media started popping up and, and, you know, everybody started, you know, having those, those big time trainers or people started putting out their stuff, then, you know, you kind of have to pick and choose because it might be something instead of going to a big name conference, it may be something I take that money and go somewhere else. Right. Like I go visit sure. somebody else. Like I had an opportunity to go out to Arizona and visit with, uh, uh, with buddy Morris when he was with the Cardinals and then with Charles Bentley, who runs an O-line program out there. Right. So um, it just happened there right close to one another. And it was something I, I just made a connection. I reached out, I emailed, said, Hey, I'm yeah. going to be in this area. Can we, can we meet? And I had a couple other connections in the past and yeah, you know, let's do it. So um, a lot yeah. of it comes from, from, from interns that you might get. Um, sure. like I've gotten interns in the past that have come from other programs and all of a sudden, you know, that intern comes and you kind of can branch out to their mentors at their old place mm. and kind of grow mm. as far as that coaching tree too. Right. So yeah. like, um, yeah. you know, I had a mentor, I had, a, I had an intern a long time ago in 2008 and uh, he ended up, you know, his, his boss ended up, you know, interning in the NFL. And then his, you know, his boss in the NFL was, was another guy that was tied to Buddy Morris. So that was the whole connection of how I got in, in, you know, like in contact with Buddy Morris and stuff. So it's all mm. kind of have to use that whole chain and, and kind of work out. So, um, but whoever's hot, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. Yeah. Like right now, yeah. big thing like sports performance network is huge, right? Like they're doing, doing great things uh with just stuff from a technical aspect online and, and you can do their fundamental yeah. courses and you can do their their chats and stuff like that um it all depends on what type of training you you do and, and how much you want to grow because it's all yeah i mean it, it's all it's all knowledge it depends what you think is is probably worthwhile as far as training goes right so yeah i think you said something in there that i i, I don't want people to um miss this point and you said that you reached out to people to connect with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that a lot of people um, really need to understand. You took the initiative to create something, to create an opportunity. And then it, you had the opportunity to go talk to Buddy and, and a couple other people, right? The thing is that a lot of people is that they don't capitalize on those opportunities they don't take that initiative. They don't reach out because they don't want to be annoying or bothersome or whatever the case may be. The worst thing that they can do is either tell you no or not respond, okay. right? And so it's like you just need to go and, and say, hey, man, like you said, I'm in the area, blah, blah, can we meet up, whatever. Um, but there's so many people that don't even do that. And I yeah, don't want I mean, them to miss that point. Yeah, like, like I mean, it's I've been told more than – no, then I've been told yes. You know what I'm saying? Like I have no yeah. problem. Like I daily with social media now, like I daily I'm probably reaching out to somebody going, Hey, how's this? Or maybe if I see something, a piece of equipment mm -hmm. or, or what they're doing, mm -hmm. hey, where'd you learn that? What's going on? You know, um yeah. stuff like that. Like, um, you know, I I, I went to a, a body tempering's a big thing. Donnie Thompson came with body tempering, you know, years ago mm -hmm. and I went to one of his clinics and it just happened that I moved to Charlotte at one point. And I was in pro close proximity to where he lived. And during quarantine, um, it was something that, you know, I asked him, I'm like, hey, you guys training down there? He's like, yeah, we're still training because all the gyms were closed and everything like that. So um, I was always already good friends with Donnie, but there was opportunity during quarantine that I trained with him for, you know, 30 weeks straight. I would drive down yeah. an hour and a half and train with him a couple of days a week because during quarantine, Shit. nobody, you know, and that was, it's a great experience, you know, and I, that's a lot of people that I've, I've gained knowledge from too, or aren't necessarily at colleges or at universities or whatnot. They may be just, you may go to a, a gym or a specific gym and they're just the strongest dude or the good dude that'll talk to you at the gym. Right. And those are people that yeah. have no formal education. They have nothing. They, they've just been training. They learned something from somebody else. Um, and if you have, if you, if you have that under the bar knowledge, you can pretty much, you know, Hey man, Hey, after we get done training, you want to go get something to eat or something like that. You know, knowing that lifts is going to turn down something to eat. And next thing you know, you got to talk <laughs> about, 
talking about whatever you know, just and whatever. And then all of a sudden, you know, if you want to lift with that crew, you lift with that crew and because you're there for a period of time. And then all of a sudden you, you learn more by being, by doing it. Right. Like, I think that's huge. I think that's something with every intern. If you have an intern that, or if you're in charge of intern program, I mean, train with them, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. Like do the same program, learn from one another, push each other. Um, you know, I, I, when I had interns, like when I was at Charlotte, I was in charge of the intern program and, and I said, Hey, we're training all together. And my goal from every workout, and it should be the same goal from you from every workout is I want you to try to break me. Every time we work out, I want you to try to break me and I'm going to try to break you because then all of a sudden you build that bond and you build that, that strength for one another. And you're there for each other because you know what they went through on a daily basis, just like athletes, right? Like you tell athletes to, to do stuff. And if they believe you long enough and they're with you and they're hundred percent in, they'll run through a wall for you. You know what I'm saying? So um, mm -hmm. it's the same thing. It's that bond and, and you just trial by fire and you just go through it. And uh, everybody comes out with more knowledge or a better sense of who you are too in the right. long run. Right. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I would try to visit everybody. I mean, that's, that's the thing. If you need to, you know, worry about, uh, let's say you want to gain aspects on speed and you can't go across the country to go see Dan Paff or, or Les Spielman or, or whoever. Um, it might be something that you just find some, some local high school track coaches that have had success, you know, and just talk to them and, and, or go to a local track meet and see who's, you know, see what's going on and try to talk to some coaches. I mean, everybody has knowledge and everybody's coming from different areas that they're going to share knowledge. So yeah, that or also one that I recommend now is uh, pay people for their time. You know, right. like if, if if you can't fly like to, to go talk to Les or whoever, right. uh, pay them for their time. Hey, man, reach out in a DM. I want to learn this. I was wondering, you know, first of all, go to their website, download their free stuff, you know, watch their videos, make it a, a thing like, hey, I've been you know, watching your videos. I've been doing blah, 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 whatever. I have a question on this. Would you be willing to hop on a Zoom? Would you be willing to do whatever? I'll pay you, blah, blah, blah. Because people's times are, are, are very, um, you know, it's limited. And if you're not going to hop on a, a jet to go across the country, hey, can we do it over Zoom, right? Um, uh, and, and go from there because then you can make a connection too, right? Or like what you're saying, that's how I get, uh, you know, I, I make a lot of connections is I just go and lift with them. Then we go get something to eat. We hang out, you know, like people come over to my place, you know, whatever, right? And it's like you just – Hey, we're going to lift. We're going to have a good time. And then we're going to be regular people. <laughs> like, you know, like that's the thing. I think what really opens up the, the pathways too is, is sharing what you have, right? Like, yeah, you know, there's plenty of, there's plenty of people like interns or whatever, and you're giving yep. information, but then they're like, well, Hey, what do you, do you have a baseball workout or what'd you do for this team? And a lot of coaches be like, no, design it yourself or whatnot, or just give you a tidbit. And that's something I've always done with my interns. Hey, like you want my hard drive? Here, take the whole, take, put it on your computer. You know what I'm saying? Like use yeah. what you can use yeah. because all yeah. our situations are different. So I know that my, this program may not work with the athletes you're working with because my athletes are a little bit different, but at least it gives you a, a ballpark of what you're doing, you know, or, or gives yeah. you, you know, don't hoard information. Um, you know, try to share as much information as possible. Uh, mm -hmm. just, and let the profession mm -hmm. grow, let people grow and understand what's going yeah. on. So. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, ask questions too. I think yeah. that's a big thing is like, you know, I've had several groups of interns myself and it's like, you can tell the ones that are actually genuinely curious about the field, the coaching, all of that, because they come in with questions. They're asking questions constantly. Hey, I was reading this. What are your thoughts on X? Hey, you know what? I watched this video. What do you think about this? Hey, when we're doing this, you know, whatever, right? It's the same thing. So like, if you're learning from somebody, come with questions, come with, Hey, you know what? Um, I watched this, blah, 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 go from there. Like, even before we started, I was like, what is it like being on advisory boards? Like, you know, like, because it's like, I don't, I don't have that perspective. I don't know. But then it, what it does is it shows that person that you're actually interested in what you guys are talking on sure. rather than just being like, oh, you need to go tell me to do everything. It's like, no, like, that's how I know you're not even interested, you know? Well, that's also from an intern perspective. That's how, you, that's how you know those people that are, that are all in as far as, they want, mm -hmm. they want to do it. They may be ready to move up to the next level. And the people that are just there to get school credit and get out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. and that, that happens. Yeah. You try to go through the process of, of weeding those people out, but some pro sometimes that's all you get, you know, are those individuals that just need school credit or want to do it yeah. with you because they're, because it's close to home or something like that. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, um, for sure. 
but yeah, I mean, that's, that's a huge thing. It's just, I think it all comes around to networking, understand the situation, understanding so, um, the route things are going like technology wise, right? Like five minutes, five years ago, you know, technology yeah, just started yeah. catching on and now it's, it's totally blown up, you know? So yeah. that's the same. Like if you look at the vendors from, cause the NSCA conference is going on now, but if you look at the vendors, majority of those vendors are all tech. They're all tech vendors, right? Yep. It used to be all yep. supplements. It used to be all supplements and equipment. And now it's like equipment and tech. There's some supplements in there, but yeah, it's yeah. totally, totally overpowered. Um, a lot that's of, the a lot thing. Of and, and that that's the thing that I'm going to speak on here because um, there's so many strength coaches that want to turn their heads away from tech, right. and they just they they do this. Well, I don't want to deal with it, right? Because it does require more time. It does require more effort, more energy, more planning. But the problem is, here's the thing: it's never going away now, because we now have the ability to quantify what was once unquantifiable, the game, lifting, sprinting, jumping, et cetera. And they're all through different companies, which is fine. But the thing is, is there's so many coaches that still don't care, don't care to know, or don't even want to know. And it's just like, you are putting yourself in a black hole that you're soon going to have to reap and sow and, 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 and you're making your own bed and you're going to have to lie in it pretty soon, essentially, because you're unwilling to take the time to learn how to utilize this, apply it and understand how you can combine physiology and technology together. But there's so many coaches that still just don't care and they have the resources at their fingertips. Like literally it's in their own facilities and they still bypass it and they still don't care and they don't know how to read data and they don't know how to integrate it and they don't know how to make recommendations to coaches and they don't understand all these other things. And it's like, you are so far don't, gone are the days of, I'm just a strength coach that likes to lift heavy in the gym. That's great, but that's gone. You're going to have to have more skill sets in order to continue to evolve and advance in the career field because everybody else is doing it. And if you're not, you're getting left behind. That, that puts some, that puts some individuals that maybe don't have the resources to get tech, right? Okay. For fair, the school, fair, that kind fair, of puts them at, at a disadvantage, but yes, it it's does. something that yes, if you want does. to get to the next level, you may have to pay some money out of your own pocket to experiment with it or go visit somebody that has it. Like that's something like if you know that you're mm -hmm. in, university x y and z and you don't have the funding to get this but you know the next level is using it you may have to sacrifice a little bit and get a get in a little bit of a debt just to to understand and learn that information more you know what i'm saying and i think some yep. people aren't willing to aren't willing to do that i think that's why sometimes they blow it off because oh we're i'm still i'm still training athletes and we're still winning without this information but then you're pigeonholing yourself just like you said and you're gonna be stuck right. at that position and wondering why nobody's nobody's picking you up or you don't, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's right. a tough situation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. I mean, you're at a disadvantage, you know, and for the, the companies, that's kind of what they want, right? Like if you don't have this, you're at a disadvantage, which is fair. Great business model. Love that. Um, you know, from that standpoint, from a coaching standpoint, you're like, yeah, I'm at a disadvantage. So they either need to make a move. You need to find people that have that. But um, it, it's something that I see consistently all the time. And I'm just like, look, man, like you're really hurting yourself, you know, and I'm not saying I'm an expert in all of it, but I use them every single day. I mean, every single day I use GPS, VBT, Force Dex, um, Team Builder. Um, we have Nord boards. We have uh, uh, timing gates. Like we, we use it all. I, I use it all, all the time. And so I, I'm seeing the numbers consistently. I'm understanding how to integrate it. I'm communicating that. You know what I'm saying? It just gives you, and I'm just like, I'm like, dog. <laughs> you know, but um, for so for those of you that are listening, uh, you should probably spend some time learning those things. <laughs> um, it can be frustrating, but you could you should spend some time. So anyway, sorry, that's my that's, that's the direction of how everything's going. And uh, some people say that you, you don't need to learn it, but it's definitely just like you said, it's definitely something people need to invest in uh, just to get some knowledge base and get some experience at it for sure. Yeah, and if it's not on your teams, then do it on yourself. Yeah. Yep, you know, um, if it's not on your teams or yourself. So anyways, that's my soapbox for today. John, any parting thoughts um, that you'd like to leave people with? I mean, I mean, if you're in this profession and it's something that you're struggling with, uh, you know, with pay or, or hours or, or stuff like that, I mean, and you need to find it, find a way out. I mean, there's plenty of opportunities out of the, just because you're not a college strength coach 
doesn't mean that you're not a coach. So if there's tactical high school, a lot of those positions are a little bit better paying in some areas than some collegiate stuff. Um, you know, so just be aware of that. I mean, there's always opportunities to move, move out of mm. profession. Um, it's not going to make you mm. less of a coach um, or anything <laughs> like that. But, and another thing is just, you know, don't chase a logo. You know, some people will sacrifice years at low pay just to live, mm. you know, live with, you know, you're, live with three guys, you're 30 years old, live with three guys in a two bedroom house or something, you know, and, and just because you're working at you power five X, Y, and Z, like there's better ways to get through things. And, and, uh, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, pri- putting things into priority and, and really, uh, figure out what's best for you in, in the long run. So, um, absolutely. I mean, we all go through it. I mean, I think every coach has gone through it. Um, it's just a matter of, of, you know, where your goals are and, and, and really where you want to be in the, in the long run. So. Mm, absolutely. John, where can people find you online? How can they connect with you? Uh, social media. Um, yeah, I think it's coach John G, uh, Patrick. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't look myself up, so I don't have no idea what it is, but that's Twitter, <laughs> Twitter and, uh, Twitter and Instagram. I'm on LinkedIn. If you yeah. want to go on LinkedIn, well, any yeah. social media, I don't do TikTok. Um, so anything <laughs> else besides that. So, um, but no, yeah, I'm, I'm open. Uh, email wise, you can email me jgpatrick13 at gmail.com. Um, I'm happy to share any information I have, any videos, any, anything that I have, I'm happy to share anything I got. So yeah, um, for sure. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time, your, your, your knowledge and your wisdom. I feel like we just kind of scratch the surface with a lot of things that you have the ability to provide on. Um, because it's, I'll tell you what, man, it gets so difficult to pack so much stuff in an hour because, you know, just like, you know, this, when you go and meet with people, you know, you might go work out for two hours and then you're going to go have lunch and that might be two hours too. (laughs) Next thing you know, you spent a full six to eight hours with them and you're like, okay, now I feel like we kind of got a lot of things out. Um, And then you're like, okay, cool. Like we can hang out more, (laughs) right? Like where you condense it, you're like, ah, you know, I want to be respectful, but it's, um, you know, there's a, there's, we are just so much more than an hour's worth of time, obviously. And so it's difficult to, you know, uh, uh, to, to showcase all of that. And so, but anyways, but, but I want to say, I appreciate you and appreciate you for your time. Um, this has been great. I, 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 I mean, it's, I think it's great. Um, and I know people will too. I know people will too. So, um, anyways, I just want to say thank you. I appreciate you. Appreciate what you're doing. And, um, I'm glad that you've been in the field for as long as you have. I appreciate you, man. And, and it's, uh, Appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak and, and have me on here and, and just talk and bring in a lot of good ideas and a lot of conversation that, that just churns in my head and, and possibly yeah. uh, talk to anybody else that needs a, needs to talk about anything, get it off your chest. I'm more, more than happy to listen to it. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For those that don't know, we talking contracts before we're talking all sorts of other things as well. So, but um, anyways, Hey, look guys, here's the deal. Do us a huge favor. Share the show. That's the only way the show grows. Okay. Reach out to John, give John a follow. Um, he's rather active on, on all platforms. I see him all the time. So try, try um, me. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So reach out to him, give him a follow, connect with him. He's he's a wealth of knowledge um, and is willing to share his time with you and, and his information. So guys, until then, do us a huge favor, share the show, follow us on YouTube, Instagram, the whole nine, and uh, we'll catch you all on the next one. Thanks, John. Thank you.